Okay, Gary Jude, winemaker here at Hunters. Welcome to Spit Bucket. Thank you. Thank you for Welcome coming on. Welcome. Glad you came. Now, before we go through the wines, we're in an interesting part of the vineyard here. Can you explain this? Uh, this was planted by Ernie in the mid '80s. Yep. Uh, it's Cabernet, which is not their best variety for Marlborough. Right. But he planted it with the idea that it's a great place to have a party. And so you have a band under here and you have people around and everything like that. And it's just, it is a great place to have a party. So and that was the whole idea of it. You've got the netting underneath, but not on the top. The birds don't come from they the top. They fly up from underneath. Is that and, right? Uh, okay. yeah, they, they don't land very well once they come down. No, that's it. And so the birds love it. Uh, Must be a bugger to pick. Yeah, it takes us a long time to pick. It's on the back of utes and everything like that, and we can't get a machine to go upside down yet. So, so. yeah, you yeah, say so you're stuck. Yep. But, uh, so. take, us, take us through what you've got. Okay, um, Riesling. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've done very well with Riesling over the years. We changed our style uh, a number of years ago. We used to make it very dry okay. uh, with high acid, and the natural fruit acid in Marlborough is very good because we get the cool nights, warm days. Yep. And so with that, you get the lime and the uh, tropicals. And so we get a whole range of flavors and uh, aromas there. Yep. But why we changed our style, the wines were great to drink, uh, drink in uh, 10 years time, but everybody drank it within six hours and probably ended up with heartburn. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a little bit more residual sugar, just about five grams or something oh, okay. like that. So, oh, you're not talking so, extremes at all. No, no. And we've got the good natural fruit acid that we talked about with the cool nights mm. and warm days. So we've just done very well with you know, a whole range of wines. Wines that have gone from, uh, in a show, we've been let known that uh, uh, we were able to show right back to 2004 yep. until the present day. We had to put three wines in. Oh, this is a new system that uh, they're doing, which is is really interesting sort of style, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So of... we've we've won a trophy for that, and uh, for, for, for the 2010 or the 2010, 2007, 2004. It's Riesling. The... Yep. Okay. And so oh, congratulations. And that's you know, just to show longevity. Yep. And they are with a bit of residual sugar. 2004 was about our first year we changed and just increased okay. our residual sugar and dropped our acid. I mean, it's still a, our only slightly over sort of detectable level, really, isn't it? I would like you to think, has it got any sugar or has it not? If you pick this up, you'd certainly not be thinking much. No. It's, it's, I mean, the, the, the acidity comes through a bit more, that sort of lovely, sort of bright, vibrant acidity mm. and, and with the flavours. So, so, yeah, I, I think that's a lovely wine. Okay, yeah. really. So, the next one is what Marlborough is most famous for. Sure. Sauvignon Blanc. Um, we've been making Sauvignon Blanc for many years. We take our fruit from a lot of different vineyards across the valley, up and down the valley to get different flavours. Do you use flavors. our growers? Uh, most of it is ours, but we okay. do have growers. Well, that's nice, yeah. And we pay our growers by the hectare rather than by the tonne. And then we so can they can do what you want them to do? Yes, and we can say, drop this on the ground yep. and you know take the fruit off. Some years is heavier than others, so we, we can control the crop level, so we can hence you know, control the flavour a lot. The aromatic, I mean, I haven't stuck that near my nose yet. I'm mm. swinging that around here, and you can still get it. The aromatics are coming right out. Yeah, it it's is. Uh, we make a very typical Marlborough Sauvignon mm. uh, with a range of uh, aromas, though, like which just goes from the grass to the tropicals, to, mm. uh, a slight bit of you know, sweat in there. We don't want too much sweat in there, I, I think. But we also have lots of, because we take the fruit from a lot of different vineyards, mm. we get layers of flavours. We get some minerality from the stones. We've got some heavier soils on the other side of the valley that we own. Does that minerality, as you get towards the end, and it's more sort of tropical up front, mm. which makes a nice, it, so you see the evolution throughout it, which is yep. a nice, a nice, interesting way to do it. We okay, so now we've got a Chardonnay. Yep. This is 2009. It has just been released. Uh, Thank you. So with that, we... Chardonnay is mainly off our own vineyards. We mm -hmm. have uh, vineyards on the stone and we've got some on the heavy ground as well. It's trying to do the same sort of thing, build up a bit of uh, complexity on the palate. Mm -hmm. And then in the wine itself, uh, when we bring it in, it goes through a bit of malolactic, a lot of solids ferment, a lot of uh, what natural yeast. Mm -hmm. uh, we do all that sort of thing. It's got a slight acidity to it. Put it into French barriques. It's all French. 
It's certainly the, the more lean or elegant end of the spectrum to some you could see. Yeah, yeah. and we would like these wines to last as well, yep. rather than being big fat and oily. We like to have a little bit of malolactic in there to control our acid, mm -hmm. uh, but we also like to have our acid in there to give it a bit of length and uh, a bit of structure to it. Mm. So. It's quite a sort of seamless style with that nice sort of texture. It seems to texture. go on and on and mm. on. And, uh, Mm. And people taste it and they say, oh, Chardonnay, yes, oh, yeah, we drink Chardonnay. And then they say, oh, I can still taste that after five minutes, and mm. that's good. And so hopefully you can do that with the Sauvignon Blanc as well. Uh, Pinot. Pinot Noir, mm. uh, a variety that's well suited to Marlborough. Yep. Uh, because we had our cool nights, warm days, and like I say, it's evolved over time, and we're getting better and better as the wines get older. Mm. Uh, the French seem to like this clone and they, uh, this wine, and they, they take it back when they uh, come here. It is not as big and black as some of the um, Merlot or Syrah looking wines, mm. but it's got all the you know, not to beautiful central. fruits and everything like that in there. It's got layers of fruits and layers of flavour. Nice. Not too much oak and uh, a wine that persists. So we use it's lots savory of style. It's not, I mean, the, there's plenty of fruit there, but there's, there's savouriness as you get towards mm. the end as well. A lot of different hard work goes. We've got small batches, we've got big batches, we've got. Yeah. And one year you think you've got it beaten and the next year it turns around and kicks you in the backside because it doesn't, yeah, it's a different vintage every year. So, And uh, the 09's, are, uh, we're told, is a good year. Yeah, and 010 maybe even better. 010 is a bit bigger in structure yeah. and uh, good fruit though. Mm -hmm. And uh, a li little bit more tannin than uh, the 09. Okay. Uh, and so we're, yeah, we're quite happy with it. We, the, the 010 is uh, looking good, but I, no, we're happy with this. I can say you'd be and, happy with that and that's yeah, a lovely one. Yeah, mm -hmm. people. Yeah, we can't keep up with this wine. It's got moment, it? terrific complexity, hasn't it? Mm. Yes, mm. Mm. Now that's wonderful. Mm. Out into the next bit bucket. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much for coming on. No uh, worries. Thank you fantastic. for coming to see us. Oh, no, pleasure. And, uh, if anyone's got any questions about uh, Hunters, any of the wines, anything Marlborough, please shoot them in. We'll pass them on. Remember, we spit so you don't have to.